El Camino is a spectacular movie. I am so happy with this film. It adds another layer to the phenomenal show of Breaking Bad, much like Better Call Saul has. I can understand as a standalone film why some people are underwhelmed by it, but as a massive Breaking Bad fan, I couldn't have enjoyed it more. It gives such a good exploration into the mind of Jesse Pinkman, how he's grown, what he's struggled with, and most of all, who he's become. The unseen conversations with many characters added so much more to the show, and I welcome them. With that said, the question asked about this movie is: You ready? Yeah. Hello, my name is Seamus McNeil, and I'm with Grasp Your Heart Productions. I really didn't expect that I would instantly make a video essay as soon as I finished this movie, but of course I couldn't help myself, and I don't know why I didn't think I was going to. This is a type of follow-up essay on the one that I made on the patriarchy of Breaking Bad, which is an essay which explores the relationship of Mike and Walter's relationship with Jesse. Now, when I finished El Camino, I did feel a bit strange. I wasn't entirely sure of how to feel about it, but then when it came to me thinking about it and then rewatching it, I really, really do enjoy this movie. I want to delve into the character of Jesse, and particularly with his struggles, his friendships, and the hurdles he comes over in this film. But most importantly, who Jesse becomes at the end of it. Let's delve right into El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. The movie starts with a flashback to Mike and Jesse having a conversation about what they want to do about Walt in the meth business. Mike is very forward with Jesse and lets him know that it's ultimately his decision of what he wants to do. Jesse deciding to leave does make Mike quite happy, which reinforces Mike's care for Jesse. Seeing Mike fight a smile makes this such a great scene to watch. It does turn dark when Mike tells Jesse about where he'd go, to Alaska. And then Jesse starts explaining how things can be made right, but Mike solemnly tells Jesse, "No. Sorry, kid. That's the one thing you can never do." This could be a mix of Mike projecting, but also warning Jesse that he shouldn't be held back by his past and just keep moving forward. Throughout the scene, Mike looks at Jesse pridefully, but also has a final look of sadness at what Jesse has been through. This could be Mike's parental care coming through, giving Jesse the choice rather than him listening obediently. But being happy, Jesse considers his opinion of where to go. The scene sets the entire mood of the film, as it is a road of nostalgia, but also progression to the rest of Jesse's life as he tries to make it to Alaska. The film is a compilation of farewells at first. Same farewell to Joe, who seems to be quite a fan of Jesse, but ultimately has to flee due to the tracker on the El Camino being activated. Then we see Skinny Pete and Badger, who helps Jesse without hesitation. Skinny Pete even gives away his iconic beanie, and it's a brilliant farewell to a character that has always been honest and caring for Jesse. With his final words being, "Dude, you're my hero and shit." The way Badger and Skinny Pete act in this scene shows how much they've grown with Jesse. They're more wise and capable of making a relatively good cover-up. But they are also willing to sacrifice their comfortable lifestyle for their friend in need, and I feel like Jesse will really miss them. Then we transition to Jesse evading the incoming police squad and go into the first flashback with Todd. Many people consider these flashbacks to be padding or pointless, yet I think it's one of the most significant sequences of the entire film. We need to consider that while Todd isn't a big character in Breaking Bad. He is a very important character to Jesse. Jack and his gang of neo-Nazis are supposed to be irrelevant, but are only made to flourish because of Walter's lack of morality. No one embodies that lack of morality more than Todd, 
who doesn't even flinch at the thought of shooting a child. No! 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 And one of the most moral, or at least empathetic characters in the show is Jesse. Todd's sociopathic nature and lack of care for human life and well-being is what makes him the antithesis of Jesse. Jesse is a child at heart but can be a rational adult, while Todd is the definition of a man-child. The way he treats the death of the housekeeper as something not to talk about is how a child would try to avoid talking about something they did wrong. Yeah, he will happily unfold the carpet used to transport her body to retrieve his belt, which most people would think is to hide evidence, but he simply thought it would be a waste. His absolute lack of awareness of morality by instantly putting his belt back on is harrowing and disturbing. Todd's manipulation of Jesse isn't won by conscious thought either. The way he treats Jesse isn't like that of a prisoner, but like a pet. Cleaning his hair, grooming him, feeding him, and even rewarding him for good behaviour. If he really was a prison warden, why would he hug Jesse rather than hit him for even daring to hold a gun against him? Because he thought that Jesse was a confused animal. Jesse could have killed him, but that would have put Brock's life in potential danger, because if Jack and the others found out Todd was missing and so was Jesse, they would kill him. Yet Todd only thought so far as to believe he was simply scared. Todd always parroting what Uncle Jack says shows us his lack of agency and awareness of the magnitude of his many actions. I may be overanalyzing now, but the irony that Jesse may have got the idea of strangling Todd from how Todd killed his housekeeper with his belt is a nice detail. Jesse uses the knowledge of Todd's hiding place in his house to try to discover the money he had hidden away. However, Todd was paranoid about his spot being so easily found and decided to do some engineering. An entire night searching for the spot and he discovers it inside the refrigerator door, similar to his luck with the ATM in the episode Peekaboo. And a remnant of Jesse's past comes back to haunt him in the guise of police officers. A confrontation commences when Jesse does believe they are genuinely officers. Jesse's restraint and unwillingness to kill still shows us that he still has a sense of morality and empathy. Unbeknownst to him, however, is that they are the ones who welded his cage for the neo-Nazis. I was wondering when you were going to remember me. Jesse has to find a way to escape Albuquerque, and he remembers the contact that Saul gave him, who is Ed. Look, I am 96% sure that you are the guy, so why don't you just, like, admit it? You owe me for that first pickup. Yes! Oh, you're the guy! Wait, what? 96% sure. The fact that this number is used as a joke and as a reference to the purity of meth that he cooked is something that is quite amusing, but it could also show how broken he was by spending almost a year making meth for the neo-Nazis because nothing is 100% now. While Ed may seem antagonistic to Jesse, being very strict on his payment rules, it gives us a sense of trust and dedication that he will stick to his word. Even though he is being difficult about it, it means that he takes his work very seriously. However, Ed does get sick of Jesse and phones the police. Jesse continues to push his luck until police officers arrives and he flees. He does call Ed and asks if his word is his bond, which Ed does confirm. This leads to Jesse calling his parents and telling them how it wasn't their fault he ended up this way. This could be just a simple ruse to lure them away from the house so he can infiltrate it, but perhaps Jesse does accept that his parents tried with him and that he can only hope his brother Jake doesn't go down the same route as he did. Maybe he did know that it was his fault, and the reason he destroys Jake's joint is to prevent him from going down the same road that Jesse did. The password to the safe being changed to Jake's birthday rather than Jesse's reinforces how removed Jesse is to his family, and this causes him to realize he has no familial ties anymore. He does unlock the safe and takes two pistols from an older era out. The shootout scene in this film is amazing. Some may see it as a simple action-packed moment, but I believe that it is the ultimate demonstration of who Jesse is as a character now. He has become an amalgamation of Walt and Mike, the two biggest influences in his life. 
He has Mike's efficiency, Walt's wit, yet still holds Jesse's compassion and willingness to try better ways. Yet he is no longer someone who will let himself be walked all over. If he can't get what he needs, he will resort to his most hated method, violence. The scene after is a backflash with Walter and Jesse. It is a very interesting scene as we see he advises Jesse to go to college and do something with himself. Jesse tells Walt that he did graduate high school, which surprises both us and Walter, despite Walter being there. This shows how far removed that Walter was at the time that even as a high school teacher, he was a bit too self-absorbed with other things. A bit of Walt's envy does slip through in this scene, through the line. You're really lucky, you know that? You didn't have to wait your whole life to do something special. This is a more bitter response from Mike's teenage retiree line, as Mike is possibly envious, but more happy for Jesse getting out of the vicious trade. Walter almost wishes he had the spirit to start something as dangerous and rewarding as Jesse did. The film ends with Jane giving Jesse her own philosophy of how someone should live life. Rather than letting the universe take you to where you are going, you should take control and go your own way. The film shows us how far Jesse has grown as a character. He was the one who let everyone lead him down roads that he may have never even wanted to go down by himself. The very first episode, Walter blackmails Jesse to make meth with him. Jesse would have probably stopped or he may have done something a bit less dangerous, but it was ultimately Walt who forced Jesse into the meth business. Yet now, the death of demons of his past have allowed him to go on his own path. Jesse does a complete flip from Walter's character arc. While Walter started out as a humble man whose job was admirable, being a high school teacher who simply supports his family, the white sweater he wore symbolizes that purity. While Jesse wore more rogue and rebellious colors in his oversized hoodies with wild designs in the first season, However, as the series progressed, Walter turned darker and Jesse started to change as well, a lot more erratically. The ending scene of El Camino has Jesse wearing a cream sweater which symbolizes that he is a lot purer than he was before, similar to Walter's white sweater in episode 1. However, what matters the most is, Jesse is the survivor of Breaking Bad and now he is finally taking his own road to the future. Thank you all for watching today's video. I really did enjoy El Camino and I couldn't help myself but make another video essay on Breaking Bad as soon as I finished the film. However, I'm probably going to leave Breaking Bad content for a while now. I'm going to continue focusing on the 16 Sound Bites miniseries where I explore SNES or GBA sound effects, music and dialogue. I am also going to be working on a horror film video essay by the time Halloween happens, so I hope you look forward to that. My name is Seamus McNeil and I am with Grasp Your Heart Productions. If your heart's racing, then so is your mind, and I hope to see you all in another video.